Ma kebok kali ni. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Welcome to the sanctuary of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, and welcome to those persons who are on the, help me, World Wide Well. We welcome everyone to our hearts and to this wonderful experience we choose to call a service. And now, just join me as we affirm the power and presence. I accept, I recognize, and I know with certainty that there is one power and one presence. We choose to call it God. It is that which manifests itself through its individual creations. It is that which has manifested itself through each one of us here this morning, those who are here and those to come. It is the collective experience we call a service. Therefore, we know for sure that all its attributes are present, and we allow it to flow freely and effortlessly, joyfully, peacefully, and with its wonderful transformative energy, so that truly every word that is spoken by our speaker, by everyone who takes this microphone, through the music, through the consciousness of everyone assembled here, we know it is God and God alone. So we know and experience an easy, effortless, peaceful, joyful experience, truly fulfilling. This is a truth for which I give thanks, and I let it be so. And so, so it, it is. is. So it is. Now, we have a wonderful chant, which some of us are more familiar with than others, but it is wonderful. It is, life is pure gold, and the words and music are by our own practitioner, Steve Golding. Life is pure gold, flowing like a river. Life is pure gold, deeper than the sea. Life is pure gold, and it lasts forever. 
Gratitude that we are here together. Gratitude that this life, being the life of God, has within it the golden ray of a joyful life. So we just accept it in silence for a while. Just let it permeate our beings in the silence. Life is pure gold. And now on page two, and if you're on the internet, you will see it, that it will be projected there for you. There's the affirmation of divine love, and we're going to say it together deeply, sincerely. Affirmation of divine love. Divine, divine love, love is, is doing, doing its, its perfect, perfect work, work here, here and, and now. now. Divine, divine love harmonizes, divine, divine love adjusts, adjusts. Divine, divine love prospers, divine, divine love foresees everything and, and richly provides every good thing for this church now. Divine love is now victorious, and so it is. And since it is such a beautiful affirmation, maybe we would like, not maybe, I'm sure we would like to use it for our church and ourselves every day of the week. It is beautiful. Now, this inspirational reading was shared with me by Reverend John to set the tone for the talk that he will be giving us. And it is taken from Joel Goldsmith's Consciousness is What I Am. And that's a class which Reverend John is taking on Thursday mornings. God at the center of my being is the law of my experience. And it is the law of love unto me. God at the center of my being is the substance and the nourishment of the food I eat. God at the center of my being is the law and activity unto every organ and function of my body. God at the center of my being is the law and activity of the weather and the climate. God, at the center of my being, draws unto me 
everything necessary for my good. It acts as a law of elimination to everything not necessary to my spiritual unfoldment and development. And so it, it is. is. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? Reverend John likes to say wonderful with the O-N-E, right? It is wonderful. Now, our announcements for Sunday. Who knows the date? July 17th. Okay, one person. Our lovely floral arrangements this morning, and I saw it when it was being, Spirit was creating it through Mrs. Faye Kessler. It is a beautiful experience. Thank you, Faye. Thank you. Oh, wow, there she is in the back. It is as beautiful as she is. Thank you, thank you. Now we want to welcome those persons. Is there anyone who's visiting in with us at the fir at, for the first time? Any, any person, I mean physically. I know each time we come, we are coming for the first time because we are ever renewed. But is there anyone who is physically coming to this sanctuary for the first time? If so, please stand. And if there's anyone online who's joining us for the first time, just make sure that you acknowledge that you are so we can reach out to you, right? So we welcome you. We welcome the newness of the Christ principle in us. Now, we have so many, many wonderful things happening at the temple. And I'm going to start first with uh, what we call it a, a sell-off one, early in the mornings for those people who are early risers at 6 a.m. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, quiet moments in the garden with Reverend John. It's a lovely way to start the day. It gives you a little rev up, wake you up, affirm you. And if you are not able to wake up early, like some people I know, then guess what? It's recorded, so you can read it later on. You can listen to it later on. It's wonderful. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, Reverend John, quiet moments in the garden. Now, spiritual mind healing service is one of the long-standing anchors in our church, and it takes place on Tuesdays and starts at 6 p.m. It's on Facebook and it's on Zoom. And this week, our presenter is practitioner Carol Campbell. So the link is sent out from our mailing list, but if you're not yet on the mailing list, just give us a call or email us and you will be permanently on our mailing list. So you may join our Tuesday healing services. Wisdom Circle, you're invited to join Wisdom Circle here in the sanctuary this morning as we continue discussing the writings of the New Thought Luminary, Dr. Tom Johnson. And it comes from his book, Lessons from the Source. Power, power prayer continues. Power prayer. Prayer power. Yeah, that too. Hey, that's a good idea. We could change the name, right? <laughs> prayer power continues on Thursdays at 6, except last Thursday when we have a webinar. And it goes on just for 45 minutes. So please join us. Yes, you can get the link from the mailing list. It's on Zoom. It's presented on Zoom. Classes. We have classes on Tuesdays and we have classes on Thursday. Now, on Tuesday, Reverend Michael Record leads a Zoom class titled 10 Secrets for Success and Inner Peace. 10 Secrets for Success and Inner Peace. Peace, starting this Thursday, the Tuesday, sorry, this Tuesday. And guess what? Man, who wouldn't want to join a class like that? Wow. And you can remember, you know, classes are for us to learn from each other 
and also to share with each other so that people can benefit from what we have gotten from all the, the teachings of this church. So please join. And Thursdays at 11 a.m. from 11 to 1, Reverend Sc John Scott conducts a face-to-face -face class, continues, consciousness is what I am. And it's based on the book of this, the author, Joel Goldsmith. He uses the same title, and the author is Joel Goldsmith. And on Thursdays, Reverend Anne Shand and Sonia Davidson lead a Zoom class titled, How I Use Truth. And it's at seven, yes, it's at seven. And it goes on until nine, yes, until nine. And we have to wrestle so that it ends at nine. It's a vibrant class where people share and hang on to the experience of truth. And it's from the writings of Dr. Emily Cady. Contributions for the classes are $1,200 Jamaican or US $10 for registered members of the temple and uh, Jamaican $1,600 and US $12 for others. Prayer support. Our church continues to be an anchor of prayer support. We respond to prayer requests in all different ways. And uh, today, a practitioner is available to pray with you after the service. And the number that I'm going to call for that, as well as the number to call for the next that I'm thing I'm sharing with you, if at any time you choose to speak to a minister, that is from Monday to Friday, from 8 a.m. to midnight, you may call the number that we are going to give you for the practitioner on duty today, which is Sandra Cooper. The number, make a note of it, is 289-0907. Remember, there's an 876 prefix. 876-289-0907 for the practitioner on duty today and to call a minister from 8 a.m. to midnight, Monday to Friday. Now, our church continues to be a blessing on an individual level and on a collective level to those who come physically, and also to the, those who join us on the World Wide Web. And we benefit from your loving gifts, your donations in whatever form you choose, tithes, offerings, we are grateful for it. This is what has been able to allow us to open our hearts and our church. So we continue to open ourselves to receive through you from the infinite. And we thank you for your generosity. And we invite you to go to our web page, donate page. You can do donate dot temple of light, CSL, temple of light, that's easy. Donate dot temple of light, CSL, remember that, dot org. You can go there, or if you want more information and you're not documenting it now, please feel free to call the office. We look forward to your loving support. And now that concludes our announcements. Don't we have a lot of wonderful things going on in our temple? Rich, 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 both online and in person. And now we will, I want you to join me with this beautiful singing, this beautiful him first him bow oh no praise song mm -hmm. back to it i am choosing heaven today and isn't it beautiful so please i'm depending on our cantors or cantor on a cantoress <laughs> to sing up so that we can all learn it and sing come on cantor and cantoress
I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing heaven today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing, I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing love today. I'm choosing love today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing, I'm choosing love today. I'm choosing peace today. I'm choosing peace today. I am walking the road of heaven right now. Singing, I'm choosing peace today. I choose abundance today. I choose abundance today. I am walking the road of heaven right now. Singing, I choose abundance today. I choose compassion today. I choose compassion today. I am walking the road of heaven right now. Singing, I choose abundance today. Joy. I'm choosing joy today. Yes. I'm choosing joy today. I am walking the road. I'm choosing joy today. I am walking the road of heaven right now. Singing, I'm choosing joy today. Wow, it's sweetie, man. I noticed y'all didn't want to let it go. It's lovely. Now, the next thing that we're going to do now is guess what? Keep standing because we're going to do the prayer. The beautiful prayer of our center. Yes. Okay, where is it? Mm -hmm. All right, so for those of us who are here, everybody has it on our flyer. And those who are on the World Wide Web, it's there on your screen. The prayer of our center, the temple of light, center for spiritual living, is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ peace, love, and joy emanate to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. The light of the Christ illumines us, our center, and our environment. Our spiritual community is filled with and surrounded by the presence of God and is growing from strength to strength. The power of God expands our consciousness of truth, guiding us ceaselessly along the paths of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfoldment, and attainment. We are blessed. And to God be the honor and the glory forever. And so it is. Okay, you may be seated while I light the candle for the children of the world. Meanwhile, you can look for your blessing for them, which is found on page three. Don't stand yet. light this candle for all the children of the world. May we just affirm them as we say, we love you, we appreciate, we appreciate you, you. We, we salute the Christ, Christ in you, you. We, we see you as shining lights onto your, your world. God, God, God is blessing you now. now. Doesn't so it is. It feels so warm and lovely to know that we are blessing the children of the world who are going to be taking the next baton, right? We are blessing them. They are like, it's like a relay. 
and we are passing. Our responsibility is to pass the baton to them and we are blessing them so that they can hold it firmly so they can pass it on to the next. You know why I'm saying all these things today, <laughs> right, don't you? Ah, something wonderful is taking place. So now, guess what? We are going to sing. You can stand if you want, or you can sit. I like to stand because I like to feel the rhythm of it. Our Temple of Light, we shall Temple of Light, Temple of Light, Temple of Light. Temple of light. Noel Dexter, uh, for those words and the tune. God bless you in your new life. Hmm, all right, no? The hymn, Thou Whose Almighty Word. No, you have to stand, right? to get words of inspiration, words of light from our pastor, Reverend John. But I'm going to preface this with asking you all to remember that in only four months' time, you will not be hearing him speak from this platform. So hold on to every word that he says. The door is going to be recording, but hold on. And just as we know that in whatever path he chooses, there's one path 
whatever way that path shall look like, he is joyful, peaceful, creative, and wonderful. But I'm saying this because he has said that he will not be coming back to the platform again. So enjoy him as you see him. You will see him everywhere, anywhere, but he is determined that he will not be taking the platform again. And since I will not be on the platform again with him, I took the opportunity to say that. <laughs> okay. So, Reverend John Scott, as always, please come with your love, with your light, with your humor, and with your God presence, and just celebrate the presence of God within you today as you share and lift us up. Thank you. I have to give you a virtual hug, <laughs> Reverend Sonia. <laughs> thank you so much. And good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wherever I go and whatever I'm doing, I carry each and every one of you in my heart. And I, I, I'm not having mixed feelings because I know and expect each person with whom I've come into contact on this journey, knowing that each one of you, your life is a living sermon, a living testimony to the truth. And as we know in the science of mind, the universe doesn't give us what we want. The universe gives us what we expect. And I expect this teaching to just grow exponentially and to spread through the world, the earth far and wide so that there is light and there is not a dark place upon the face of the planet. From east to west, from north to south, above, below, and within the consciousness of humankind, this movement, known as the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, this movement which began with a, a, an illumined soul called Dr. Ernest Holmes, can only grow exponentially and fill the human race with the beauty of knowing that God, called by many names and worshipped in so many different ways, but God, the one indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause, is the only presence and the only power there is. Say with me, God is the only presence and the only power there is. God is the only presence and the, and the only power there is. In my life. In my, in my life. In my home. In my home. In my business. In my business. In the temple of light. In the temple of light. In Jamaica. In Jamaica. In the world. In the world. And throughout the cosmos. And throughout the cosmos. This is our affirmation. This is our expectation. And the universe must respond. Wow, what a thought. And so I've titled my encouragement this morning, What Do You Expect? So I was at the supermarket and I heard an argument between two people, a gentleman and a lady. I don't know if they had a, a, an intimate relationship, but they obviously knew each other well. And they were having an argument over the vegetable stand. And I don't know what the argument was about, but eventually he said, so what do you expect? What do you expect? And I thought, yes, the universe is asking you the same question. What do you expect, my friend? What do you expect of life? What do you expect of your children and your grandchildren? What do you expect of your spouse? What do you expect of Jamaica? What do you expect of life in general? Because the universe will give you not what you want, but what you expect. So I hope he answered that question accurately for that lady over the vegetable stall, because she's going to get what she expects, and he may not get what he expects if he doesn't find a way of resolving whatever the conflict or the disagreement was that was putting a wedge in their relationship. But I wanted to talk this morning a bit about expectations because it is such a powerful spiritual law. And I, I know a young woman, she's a student, 
And she recently expressed her belief to me that she's destined for an early demise, early death. And why? Because her mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother all died before age 60 of heart, some heart issue. And so she, she said, told me in a very matter-of-fact voice, and so I'm just awaiting the divine will. <laughs> Interestingly, her grandfather is still very much alive and vibrant and well. And so I wanted to know from her whether it wasn't better for her to believe that she take after her grandpapa instead of her grandmama. But no, she was fixated on the idea that early death runs in her family. <laughs> you know, my friends, the organization uh, known as the Science of Mind, originated by Dr. Ernest Holmes, um, teaches some powerful lessons about how we use the tools that have been given us, the faculties of God that have been bestowed upon us. And Ernest Holmes writes, and I quote, there is nothing in the universe that limits us or that would or could desire to limit us. The idea that God is trying our souls to see if we can make it, you know, how we, how, how we handle things. This idea, Holmes says, that God is trying our souls to see whether or not we can make, take it, so to speak, is nonsense. For he says that idea is born in ignorance and in superstition. The true significance, my friends, of the concept of the divine will is that God's will for you is really your will for yourself. And so if we could just get into our consciousness this strong identification with the spirit, this living spirit that dwells within us, and say, with every breath as we awaken in the morning and throughout the day, Father, I will to will thy will, for thy will for me is my will for myself. So my friends, what is our expectation of our lives? What do we will for ourselves, for our church, and for our world? Holmes says that, let me see if I can put it this way. He puts it this way. Those, there is a vast difference between waiting in doubt and waiting in certainty of the outcome of the divine will. So we wait for the divine will, we surrender to it. But do we wait in doubt and it, with the, the kind of mental set and consciousness that we, are, we have no say in the matter? Or do we wait in surrender, knowing that we are co-creators with the Almighty, with the infinite invisible, of every aspect and facet and relationship of our lives. So a positive approach would be to submit to the divine will in a happy awareness that God is with me and God is for me every step of my life's way. This is a positive approach to setting your expectations of the universe. It is a basic concept of the science of mind that the idea of good will always destroy an idea of evil. Whether that idea of evil is an actual reality in our minds, because sometimes you know, we create a whole scenario around the bad things that could happen. Or whether we, we just, for a fleeting moment, succumb to that human tendency and then remind ourselves as students of the truth that there is only one will, the will of God, and the will of God is the will for good in all of life and in all of our experiences. Jesus, the great way shower, taught the same principle in a simple way when he said, ask and what? It shall be given you. What's the next thing? Seek and ye shall find. Ah, thank you. Knock and what shall happen? It shall be opened unto you. And you know what? You know what has been the big block to our demonstrating this truth? Mankind has chosen to keep such a strong, fearsome hold on the concept of his so-called sinful self 
that he dares not ask he feels, lest it may not be given. He dares not seek because he fears he will not find. He dares not knock, believing that it will not be opened. And because he chooses to remain convinced that he deserves not the good he longs for, he dares not even hope for it. Such is the tragedy, my friends, of human will, the tragedy of human interpretation of the divine will. And such, again, is the negative total acceptance of the misunderstanding of the divine will. It is not about uh, the will of some capricious, moody, sometimeish kind of being that wakes up in a good mood and gives you what, what you want and that other times withholds it just for sake. For spite, as we say in Jamaica. My friends, dare we this morning, today, right here and right now, believe in the universal good? Dare yes. we do that? Yes. I mean, I'm not convinced. Here are a few. Thank you, thank you. Yes, no. <laughs> Miss, yes me suppose so. <laughs> yes, me hope so. Yes, but me not sure, you know, because my car wouldn't start this morning. Or, yes, you know, me have to go find rent tomorrow. I mean, I don't know where it will come from. But yes, I believe, I believe. Uh -huh. No. Let us dare to believe in the universal good. Dare we ask for the divine givenness? Let us say together, today I hold up the cup of acceptance. Together, today I hold up the cup of acceptance and it is filled to overflowing with the divine givingness. And it is, and it is filled, filled to overflowing with, with the divine, divine givingness. givingness. Dare we expect divine grace? You know, once I lost it at the, at a, in a store and they had messed up an order that I had made and I, I said, well, I'm coming for it. When am I to come for it? And she said, by three o'clock. And I said, when I get here, who am I to ask for? And she said, ask for grace. I wrote pages in my journal. I needed to ask for grace. I went down, I sat in my car, and I prayed for about 20 minutes. So, give me grace. So dare we ask for the divine grace that we, is ours without our having to do anything to deserve the goodness that is the will of God for us. The, divi the divine will then for us is for all good that we can conceive. Let us say the divine will for me is all the good that I can conceive. Let's say that. The, the divine, divine will, will for me is, is all, all the good I that I can conceive. conceive. Please turn to anyone near you and say, the divine will for you is all the good you can conceive. The divine will for you is all the good that you can conceive. <laughs> yes, my friends. You know, we sang, I'm choosing heaven today. It is a matter of choice. When we become receptive to the thought that God thinks within us, and we embody those thoughts in an expectancy of good, then good can be the only outcome in our lives and in our affairs. Dr. Holmes advises, and I quote, never close your eyes to the fact that God is in everything in his universe and there is good in everything, but we often have to search for it, unquote. So friends, we must try to see God in every experience and remember, as Jesus gave us the assurance, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. And so this brings me to your assignment. Everyone who attends the Temple of Light know when I speak, I always give an assignment. Some people do it faithfully, some people do it sometimes, but if you even do it once, make this be the one time today. Because your assignment this week is to bring to mind a challenge that is facing you. It doesn't have to be something monumental, just a simple decision you have to make this week. But bring to mind a challenge that is facing you and 
Just in a few words, jot it down in your journal or on a piece of paper so that you give it, you can look at it in black and white. You know, so, you know when you put down your thoughts on paper, there is a kind of connection that doesn't happen when you just keep it in your, in, your, in your mind. So write it down in your journal and then take a few deep breaths and gently close your eyes and ask spirit to reveal the blessing that this situation holds for you. I normally just put, Lord, show the way. And uh, you know, when we use the word law, another word for Lord is law. Law, show me the way. Sometimes our subconscious mind, our intuition, the intuition within us, knows without the process of, of thinking, the logical sequence that happens in our brains, sees beyond the three-dimensional world that we live in and knows without process of reasoning the right steps to take, the right action, the right way to go. So just say, Lord, in this situation, show the way. And when you are done, simply give thanks. And don't worry, sometimes things come to you that mightn't even make sense in the moment. But this process of visioning, of saying, you know, what is spirits? highest idea in this situation, in this challenge I am facing. If you just remain open and receptive, spirit will show the way. Friends, good is ours for the asking and for the taking, for the accepting, but the choice has to be ours. I think about it like going to a, a buffet. You know, and the table is spread with all the goodies you can imagine. If you're a vegetarian, there are vegetarian delicacies. Uh, if you are a, a meat eater, there is every form of, of, of recipe and dish that you could possibly imagine. And you go into the dining room and you sit and you notice the people are coming back to their table with their, their plates laden, sometimes too full. And you're saying, well, hunger, you see? Then get up and go onto the table now. You have to go and choose from what is spread, the table of life spread before you, what you want, what gives you pleasure, what titillates your imagination. I want to try something new, but I also must have my little skencha stew peas, you know. Whatever it is, you get to choose. It is the biggest gift. And the power of choice is really in your hands. There's a wonderful Sufi teaching story, which I've t I told some years ago, but like every good teaching story, it's worth repeating. It's about two little boys, two mischievous little boys in a village who hatch a plot to embarrass the village, a visiting sage who has come to the village and is going to be um, holding a village circle where he will share his wisdom with them. And the plot was that they would ca capture a young nightingale and have it in their hands, and they would say to him, oh, wise one, is this nightingale alive or dead? If he said it was alive, they would squash it in their hand and let it drop to the floor, dead. If he said it was dead, they would let it fly free, and either which way, the sage would look like a, you know, like him never know what I'm talking about, would look like, as we say in Jamaica, a idiot. And so the day of the village circle arrived, and the little boys took their place, you know, up front, and... Um, when he had finished his, his, um, his encouragement, he invited questions from the crowd. And so they approached him and said, Oh, wise one, what do you think I have in my hands? And he said, Well, judging from the tail feathers protruding between your fingers, I, I would say it looks like uh, it seems to be a young nightingale. And the little boy said, and, oh, wise one, he said with a smirk, is it alive or is it dead? And the sage closed his eyes and smiled. And when he opened it, he looked at them and said, it's in your hands, children. It's in your hands. And so that is my message to you this morning, my friends. The choices you make are in your hands. And we need to ask spirit for the guidance to know which way to go sometimes. 
So that's your assignment. Choose a, a, a challenge that you have and know that the choice is in your hands and ask spirit to guide you which way to go. Last Sunday, you know, Sandra Cooper gave us an update from our thriving ministry council on what's been happening with the implementation of our, our strategic plan. Unfortunately, we had issues with our live streaming, and so folks online missed much of it. And in any event, so much is happening that we all need time to take it all in. So I'm going to ask that the report be emailed to you all, and then I'm going to invite you all to a village circle on the fifth Sunday of July. Does, does July have five Sundays? Yes. Um, so that we can, we can talk as a family. I hope we'll have it on Zoom as well. So that we can talk as a family, ask questions of our action teams, and give them our, our support and our guidance and our feedback and ideas as well. Because the future of this organization really is up to us. And Sandra talked about, um, you know, many, many ideas and many, and many programs in, in, that are in, in progress and spoke about huge sums of money needed. But I want to say to you that there are also little ways in which you can be involved. For example, we are just um, engaging a, a, a student from the university for the summer to help us to to beef up our social media presence. And you know that social media is the way to get the word out. It's the way of the 21st century. And so we, are, this young student is willing to, to give us the summer and to do this for us. We need to give her a stipend, a, a honorarium. You might feel, if you feel moved to perhaps um, contribute in this way, which is not a fortune, just give me a ring or um, email the temple at templeoflight at cwjamaica.com and, um, and, and let us know. So there are little ways we can be involved, but we want every person who has been blessed by this teaching, whether now, long time, like I've been here from 1981, but those that just come and those that are um, experiencing the power and the empowerment and the beauty and the love and the truth that this center stands for and that the gift of givingness which this church gives and shares with the world. We want everybody who has been touched in any way by the science of mind and spirit to become involved in co-creating with God a temple of light center for spiritual living that grows from strength to strength. No matter, people will come and people will go, including the pastor, but that the right persons are always on spot and on time to take this teaching far and wide. So that through the earth, far and wide as we sang this morning, the light of God, the light of truth, the light of love, the light of joy, the light of liberty, the light that is the unique and beautiful expression of Jamaica colors the world with the beauty of holiness. And so my friends, focus on your expectation and speak your word for the goodness that you know is yours by divine right of being. And trust me, the universe has your back, and the universe will respond when you express what you require and what you expect, knowing that you do not do this alone. You couldn't even want it and expect it if it wasn't for the fact that God, the living Spirit Almighty, does it through you to its own honor and glory. And so goodness abundant prosperity, truth and beauty are God's will for us individually and, and as a community. Truly, I have not seen nor e'er heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But remember, we must choose. It's in your hands, children. It's in your hands. Namaste. Wow, wow.
whoa, whoa, whoa. How can anyone ever dare to summarize that talk, which is already summarized at the end? But I just want the, that the sentence to just go with us. The quality of our lives is in our hands, is in the expectancy. If we know who God is, what God is, and where God is, and our relationship with God, we can expect only good and allow that good to be that which comes to us on time and in order according to what is perfect for us at any particular time. Isn't it fabulous to be able to walk, as Reverend John said, walk this earth with the certainty that godness and goodness is the gift that has been given to us. Wonderful. Thank you again, Reverend John. Woo. <laughs> savor it, savor it, savor it. Thanks, thanks, thanks. And you know, you can go listen to it and you can share it, you know. You can go on YouTube, you can go on Facebook and share it because it's, there's so much richness in it, right? That you may want to, not me, you will want to listen to it again and share it with your friends. No, is he here? Ah, Mr. Hanif is here to just put the icing on the cake to come forward and bless us with his gorgeous voice. Thank you, Hanif. How are we doing? <laughs> Excellent. Happy Sunday. I see trees of too I see them blue for me and you and I think to myself what a wonderful world I see skies of blue clouds of white, bright blessed days, dark sacred nights, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty sky are also on the faces of people passing by I see friends shaking hands saying how do you do they're really saying I love you I hear babies cry I watch them grow, they learn much more than I'll ever know, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world, yes, I think to myself. What a wonderful world. What a wonderful world and what a wonderful voice. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, Angela. That was just as Sonia called the icing on the cake. That was a whole cake for me. Mm. <laughs> Please join me in the prayer of Jamaica, which is in your program. 
and on the screen. The radiant light of God's love is now flowing through us and from us to everything and everyone it touches. The eternal light of God's love now completely fills, covers, and surrounds our island Jamaica. The glowing intensity of the light of God's love now interpenetrates and awakens within the hearts and minds of our countrymen and women the truths of life which set free. The light of God's love is growing and glowing in intensity in the hearts and minds of mankind everywhere. Love, health, harmony, goodwill, peace, uprightness, integrity, joy, prosperity, kindness, and our oneness under God are now established. And so it is. And please stand and sing with me this wonderful hymn, This Is You. Wonderful, the universal love has manifested here in you and to me. I look at you and see you, the God potential there. This is the way you in reality. So let the infinite love. gifts in your hands, and if you're at home and about to press the donate button at donate.templeoflightcsl.org, put your hand on the biggest offering there is, your heart, and say with us lovingly, I give, joyfully I receive, be thou fruitful, increase and multiply, bless, prosper and enrich everyone whom you touch.
and, and replenish all of my financial affairs. So thank you, Father. Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And, and so, so it is. is. In this consciousness, we bless the gifts of talent, of consciousness, of money substance, and above all, the gift of love that has been brought into the sanctuary and online this morning to make this another celebration of the goodness of God, whose will it is that each of us should live resplendent and powerfully abundant and joyful lives that honor and glorify the maker of all. And so we bless each other, we bless all that is, and we bless the will of God in a world that works for all. Let go, release it, and know that as it has been spoken, so it has already been fulfilled. And we give thanks that this is so. And, and so, so it, it is. is. And we will sing, Yes, There is Light. Tuesday evening at our spiritual mind healing service at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on Wednesday morning with quiet moments in the garden. And then on Thursday morning at our class. And on Thursday evening at prayer power. And on Thursday evening also at our class. And that light leads our footsteps back to this place of worship, this place of love. Next Sunday where we again trust it will be filled with the glory of your consciousness to the honor and glory of God. Namaste.